CT-5539, nicknamed Hawk, was bred for war like the millions of other clones on Kamino. But unlike the rest of his clone brothers, he saw very little action in the Clone Wars, as during one of its early battles he was abandoned when he was shot out of a Republic gunship. Left for dead just like that by his Jedi General, Hawk came to hate the mystical warriors he originally looked up to. Unlike the legendary stories he had heard of them prior to his first deployments, he came to realize how ineffective the Jedi were as generals, countlessly making mistakes that cost the lives of troopers and even their own. They were not worthy to lead lifetime trained warriors like himself. Nearly having lost his own eye and greatly injured, Hawk was barely able to survive on his own in the wilderness until he was finally rescued by a couple of farmers. Farming became his way of life for the next two or so years, until Hawk overheard some stories of a new dark warrior that had arisen in the galaxy since the Clone Wars. This dark warrior was Darth Vader, whose accomplishments as the Empire's enforcer reignited the fighting spirit within Hawk as he was simply astonished of the possibility of serving a true warrior for once in his life. With this new spark to fight, Hawk left the farming life and sought to rejoin his clone brothers, who were now the newly reorganized Imperial Stormtroopers. While Hawk made his way back into civilization, he came across a city that was celebrating its new Imperial rulers, with the people being rewarded for their capture of a Jedi. The Jedi had been beaten by the people and placed in a cage. Upon seeing the captured Jedi like this, Hawk came to realize just how truly weak they were in the end, which only deepened his need to serve a true warrior like Darth Vader. Once he finally got to don the white armor of the clones once more, Hawk was brought under the Sith Lord's command. Having realized how different a man he became since he was originally abandoned, Hawk came to engrave the lessons he had learned of survival by painting his helmet with a red mark to symbolize the scar he received during his abandonment. During his first battle in years, Hawk gave it his all, going beyond the call of duty and doing everything he could to prove to Vader that he was worthy to be under his command. As expected, Vader did come to notice Hawk's performance, becoming impressed with the clone's ability to hold his own against near impossible odds. Hawk came to notice Vader's supernatural actions as well, being amazed to see them firsthand as the Sith Lord cut down numerous Jedi at once with ease, and his ability to stoke fear in the Empire's enemies with just his presence alone. Unlike the Jedi who only spoke of peace and order, Vader physically brought peace and order through his actions, and that alone made Hawk look up to him. Hawk's actions of going beyond the Call of Duty earned him not only the Sith Lord's respect, but also the title of commander within Vader's troopers. Soon he came to earn the Cyborg's trust as well, which was a rarity few were able to attain. Then came the Battle of Oster, which would put Hawk and Vader's relationship to a test. Oster came to become home to a separatist colony which sought to live outside of Imperial rule. The Empire, of course, was not going to allow that to happen, as upon its discovery of the separatist colony, Darth Vader and his troops were sent. Now the entire operation that underwent involving Oster was the first time that Hawk came to criticize Vader, with more than three main mistakes that the Sith Lord made in the clone's opinion. First was that Vader himself did not participate in the battle on the ground himself. Second was that he ordered no reconnaissance prior to the battle. And third was that he put General Roan in charge. The only thing he did right in Hawk's opinion was having the clone being placed in charge of the first advance. But there was only so much the clone commander could do against General Roan's command. First, the general became emotionally invested into the battle upon seeing the enemy hold up a banner that made fun of him personally. This caused the general to order a direct attack on the enemy, which saw the movement of all troopers deep into the enemy territory without proper reinforcements. Although initially they were slaughtering the enemy with ease, Hawk came to realize how suspicious everything seemed and requested for his men to fall back, sensing a trap from the enemy to be sprung at them. The general dismissed Hawk's concerns, with himself being more concerned about the fact that the banner that had insulted him was still up. Hawk refused to obey the general's command and attempted to reorganize the troops himself on the ground, but there was too much chaos happening for him to accomplish anything, and in his opinion, because some of the armor was being worn by non-clone humans that already had greatly weakened the discipline of the entire battalion. Hawk eventually made his way back to General Roan's position back inside the ATTE walker, demanding that the general change his mind and call in for a tactical retreat, to the point of throwing his own helmet at the walker's window. Being shown such disrespect, 
The general ordered Hawk to be taken in as a traitor, but Hawk refused to go down without a fight, eventually shooting his way into the ATTE walker and snapping General Roan's neck. But he was too late to change the outcome of the battle, as while he was fighting his way to stop General Roan, all other Imperial troopers were killed as they had fallen into the trap Hawk had predicted earlier. Soon after, Hawk received a call from Darth Vader who demanded answers as to what had happened, and answers were given from the clone to the Sith Lord. Understanding that this defeat was partially Vader's own fault for being too careless in the beginning, both he and Hawk came to an agreement to put the entire blame on General Roan. And this level of trust was put to the greatest test as both Vader and Hawk were to explain themselves to Emperor Palpatine himself, who was accompanied by some other high-ranking Imperials. As they had planned earlier, they both placed the blame and all faults of the battle on General Roan. Never in his life had Hawk expected to meet the Emperor in person, let alone lie to his face, but his trust in Vader had allowed him to carry on without flinching. As a result of them placing the blame on the dead general, both Clone and Sith Lord left the meeting without punishment, with Palpatine only ordering Vader to always be directly involved in the battles from now on. Hawk also came to realize how lucky he was not to be terminated, later believing that Vader himself prevented that from happening. As the two walked down the hallways following their meeting with the Emperor, Vader came to place his hand on Hawk's shoulder in a comforting manner. The Sith Lord then asked if the clone was as bold behind the controls of a starfighter as he was on the battlefield, or perhaps even more impressively, as he was in the front of the Emperor's throne. Hawk responded that he could definitely hold his own, but Vader responded that he could find countless pilots that could hold their own, for he wanted one he could trust, and Hawk was the only one he could count on in that regard. And as the Sith Lord left the clone following these words, Hawk came to view Vader as a friend, and was honored to hear the Dark Warrior put such great trust in him. But these feelings for Vader would soon come crashing down, as Hawk would come to see the true monster the Sith Lord actually was. Back on Oster, it was round two for the Empire, and this time they were not playing around. Coming with attacks from both the air and the ground, Hawk joined Vader and helped lead the Starfighters against the Separatists' shielded base. During their attack, the Separatist colony had yet another surprise attack up their sleeves, as they too had Starfighters to fight with, using numerous ships from the former Republic. Although Hawk was able to hold up his own for quite some time, he was eventually shot down and he blacked out right as he hit the ground. He later found himself waking up inside the enemy's medic bay. While there, he talked to a few of the other injured patients until learning that there were no guards within the entire base, as all those who were capable of fighting were in the front lines. With this new knowledge, Hawk got himself out of the medic bay and searched the base until he discovered the command center, which contained the three leaders of the Separatist colony. When he met them, Hawk demanded that they end their crusade against the Empire and to surrender, but the Separatist leaders refused. Instead, they attempted to persuade him by telling the clone exactly why they were fighting the Empire. Their goal was purely to do what their people wanted, to fight for the fundamental principles of democracy and justice that the Empire clearly did not believe in, and that their entire show of defiance that day was done in a desire of lasting long enough to inspire hope in others across the galaxy to do the same. Although still determined in stopping their small rebellion, Hawk was unable to commit himself to murdering them all there with a pipe, as their devotion to such pure ideals had him slightly shaken up. Plus, he saw no need to murder unarmed leaders, who made it clear that they would not fight back. Instead, Hawk searched across the base until he found its shield generator and was able to disable it from protecting the entire colony. As the shields came down, the Imperial Starfighters began to bomb the buildings nearby. As Vader and his now-landed troopers began to march toward the enemy base, Hawk decided to track down the enemy soldier's field commander and take him out. But as Hawk located this rebel commander, he came to realize that he too was a clone. This once again shook the core of Hawk, as he never believed one of his own could betray the Empire. But this shock only lasted for a moment, as Hawk still followed through with attacking the rebel commander. The two got into a brutal fistfight, with them forming a large crowd around them, as both the rebel soldiers watched from one side, and Vader's now approached troopers watching from the other. Vader had ordered them to stand down, as he himself was curious to see how the outcome of the clone fistfight would go. Although Hawk was beaten down to the ground, 
He did win by grabbing onto a giant rock and smashing it into the rebel commander, killing him instantly. With a clear victor from the fight, Vader ordered his troopers to fire upon the rebel soldiers that stood across. While this was happening, Vader showed a rare ounce of humanity by reaching a hand out for Hawk, confirming to this clone that the Sith Lord now viewed him as a true friend. With this boost in morale, Vader and Hawk together fought their way through the remaining rebel soldiers, but as the rebel soldiers' numbers began to dwindle, Vader's wrath seemed to only increase, for he not only killed just the men, but the women and the children too. Hawk seemed to be briefly caught up in this revenge-filled rage himself, but slowly snapped out of it, as he could barely recognize himself upon realizing the horrors he had helped commit. As Hawk was getting back to his senses, he came to truly see the monster Darth Vader was at his core. No one was spared from his killings, and the horror Hawk saw the Sith Lord commit was beyond inhuman to him, to the point where he no longer viewed Vader as a human being, but as a mere demon. As the battle slowed down, Hawk re-entered the enemy base he had woken up in earlier. As he entered the command room, he saw all three rebel leaders dead. It was clear that they had not put up a fight, but that did not matter to Vader. As he saw the Sith Lord make his way down to the medic bay, Hawk knew he needed to step in and try to prevent any more pointless deaths. As Vader entered the medic doorway, Hawk rushed in and demanded all patients in the room to accept their defeat and kneel before their new Imperial rulers, knowing that them doing so was likely their only hope in being spared. What came next was perhaps the most shocking thing both Hawk and Vader saw. One of the patients, who had had all but one of their limbs blown off, made a slow but clear effort to stand up on what little remained of his blown off legs. A stand up in defiance to ever kneeling to the Empire and his courage was then followed by everyone else in the medic bay. Angered by this act of defiance, Vader proclaimed their fates as the same as all those he had killed in battle. And with that, the Sith Lord began to cut down every single patient in that medic bay, all in front of Hawk who watched in horror. Not being able to take this nightmare any longer, Hawk started to shout stop at the Sith Lord. To his surprise, Vader did indeed stop and stood still, perhaps in shock that the clone he had trusted so much had turned against him, maybe bringing up memories of his other friends who he believed had done the same in the past. Nonetheless, Hawk was in such shock that he did not remember what he had said after he had gotten Vader's attention. All he knew was that he had misplaced his respect and came to realize what exactly the people were standing up against, the pure evil that Vader and the Empire he served symbolized. For a brief moment, Hawk reached out to Vader, believing he could get him to change his course in life. But then Hawk realized something, that he may have misinterpreted Vader's stillness from earlier. It was all completely possible that the Sith Lord had not heard or cared for Hawk's shouts to stop, and that he only stood still as a means of deciding on who to kill next. And with that realization, Hawk came to believe that Vader, the one he had respected so much and desired being friends with, was simply a monster he had to get away from. And the clone did just that, leaving the Empire and becoming a farmer once more, with him later starting a family of his own. Despite being away from Vader, Hawk still feared the dark monster, and with him at times seeing the Sith Lord's helmet in the shadow of his life. However, in the end, Hawk was able to live out the rest of his life in peace with his family, with Vader becoming only an old memory to the clone. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and as always, may the force be with you.